Oxfam, the once world-renowned charity aid agency, campaigning organization, hit a new low today when it was reported that they had decided to cancel J.K. Rowling, uh, the best-selling author ever, and of course, uh, the uh, author of Harry Potter. What she did wrong, we will examine. But let's first analyze why a charity charged with raising the maximum amount of money for its presumably good causes decided to prioritize the point of view of what they described as our transgender members of staff over the fundraising that J.K. Rowling was facilitating. It sounds pathetic, really. It was a board game, a bingo game, in which J.K. Rowling was one of a number of famous women. It was a pro-women thing. Maybe that was its problem. It was showcasing successful women in a board game. It was on sale in the charity shops belonging to Oxfam, but no longer. Oxfam decided to remove it. Oxfam decided to cancel J.K. Rowling. I have therefore cancelled Oxfam, and I'm encouraging other people to do the same. I had long harbored doubts about supporting Oxfam because of a number of scandals in which they have been involved over recent years, but I was still supporting them, but no longer. I've had enough of the cancel culture. Haven't you? We'll be asking in a poll later about Dave Chappelle. Now, I had never heard of Dave Chappelle. I'm sorry, it's my age and class and my tastes in comedy. I had never watched him. I was vaguely aware of his existence, but couldn't have put a name to the face or a face to the name. Now I've watched all of his work. Why? Because transgender members of the staff of Netflix are trying to have him cancelled because of his comedy routine, which asserted, as J.K. Rowling has asserted, and as I now assert, a man cannot become a woman by the mere self-declaration of that transition. A man should not be housed in a penitentiary for women just because he has decided to identify as a woman. A crime committed by a man should not be ascribed to women just because the criminal has self-identified as a woman. A man should not be playing in sports that are reserved for women just because he has declared that he is a woman. That way lies the end of women's sports. We saw what happened at the uh, recent championships when New Zealand fielded a weightlifter who was in fact a man who identified as a woman and who was able to blow away uh, the female competition. How much more so in a boxing ring? How much more so on a wrestling mat? How much more so in running and in other forms of athletics? A man must not be allowed into women's changing rooms, women's spas, girls' changing rooms. Girls should not have to get undressed in front of men just because those men identify as women. Now, it may be my age and class, but nothing that I've just said there is remotely controversial to me. Nothing, not one word of what I have said is remotely contentious. It has the benefit of being biologically, scientifically true, absolutely unassailably true. 
But in fact, everything I just said there would get me cancelled off Netflix, would get me withdrawn from sale in Oxfam, would get me drummed out of my university post as an academic if I said it and I was a university professor. This is madness. The stating of the truth becomes a cause for cancellation, for witch hunting, for losing your job, losing your career. What madness is this? Well, it's the madness that we are currently in. Not content uh, with the uh, transmania uh, of uh, public bodies up and down this country, not content with that, alongside it has begun a campaign for the cancellation of the word and the idea of woman itself. My daughter, recently given birth, was at a chest feeding class last week. Chest feeding, not breast feeding, chest feeding. In virtually every health board in the country, women's health has been airbrushed off the map. You cannot now find women's clinics, women's health departments. You cannot find any reference to pregnant women anymore. It's pregnant people, even though only women can be pregnant. We're being told uh, that there are men with cervixes. I saw a reference today to a male placenta. All of this has gone completely bonkers. And the Scottish government, so-called, in fact, a devolved provincial administration, has decided to be in the vanguard of this question, if only on this question. The fact that our COVID outcomes this day are not just the worst in Britain, but the worst in Europe and one of the worst in the world. Yes, that's right. All these liberal chatterati who told you that Nicola Sturgeon was handling the pandemic better than the buffoon Boris Johnson were all lying. She's handled it much worse even than the buffoon Boris Johnson. We're in the vanguard of all of these gender issues. We've abolished the term mother. Can you believe that? Mother. Without mother, none of us would be here. All of us love, revere, respect our mothers, except in Scotland, where the word mother will no longer be uttered in official communications. This madness has gone far, far, too far, has it not? And I'll tell you why. Because nobody has the guts to stand up for it. The university teaching union, when one of its leading members, a distinguished academic at Sussex University, was witch hunted out of her position, effectively. Her trade union sided with the witch hunters and against her. Who's standing up for Dave Chappelle in Netflix? The chief executive just apologized for his uh, shtick uh, that had uh, actually impressed with its sensitivity on the subject of the undoubted travails of being a trans person. His sensitivity, his love for his friend, a trans person, didn't save him. He may yet be cancelled off Netflix, like J.K. Rowling has been cancelled by Oxfam. 
We'll be talking about this today because actually there are very few spaces in which it is any longer possible to speak about this matter. You'll be pelted with eggs or worse. A researcher in the British House of Commons, of course a researcher for the SNP, has had his House of Commons pass just cancelled by the Speaker because he was involved in a Twitter timeline that actually called for Antifa to turn up outside the meetings of those women who won't wish, those women who will not be silent, will not be silenced, will not be wiped off the historical map. And one of the tweets had an Antifa woman with an automatic weapon in her hands. And they all said, it's about time this happened outside the turf meetings and conventions going on around the country. You're in trouble if you speak like I'm speaking now. It's only on RT that you can do so. If I were on any other television channel right now, I would already have been cut off. And as it happens, President Putin of Russia said two vitally important things in his long talk uh, to Western media and academics in Valdai, in Sochi, just this week. He said two things that were a standout for me. The first was that the form of capitalism practiced in Western countries today has completely failed and will have to be ditched because it is incapable of squaring the circle. It is incapable of resolving its own internal contradictions. Something that I strongly believe in and have been advocating, arguing everywhere for many, many years. But the other thing that President Putin said was that the mere assertion of biological truth and fact inevitably, ineluctably, in Western countries now has been criminalized and outlawed. Children are being encouraged to change genders. Children are being encouraged to imagine uh, that there are 99 or is it 101 genders. Anyone who states, as I'm stating now, that men are men and women are women, if a man wants to dress as a woman, act like a woman, that's fine by me. I don't give a toss what anybody else does with their life, with their wardrobe, in their bedroom, in their bed. I don't genuinely care one thing about it. If a man wants me to treat them as if they were a woman, I'm more than ready and happy to do it. Just don't accept, don't expect me to agree with your assertion that you are in fact a woman and that you have the right to go into my daughter's changing room, into her spa or into the boxing ring for women with her. I'm stating these facts because it's not safe for other people in other places to do so. I will not be cancelled by RT for doing so because here at RT we believe in the truth and moreover we believe in freedom of speech. As Ricky Gervais said this week, if you don't believe in freedom of speech for those you disagree with, you don't believe in freedom of speech. You're not a liberal. You're not a progressive. And one day, somebody will come to cancel you and there'll be nobody left to defend you. We'll be talking about all these matters. We'll be talking 
about the 59th anniversary of the Cuban Missile Crisis. When I was a child, I lived just a few miles from a Royal Air Force base called Lukers. And I went to bed, age seven, having heard my parents talk the night before that we were on the brink of a third world war. And in the morning, I heard the airplanes from Lukers and I pulled the covers over my head because I believed uh, that the bomb was about to be dropped. Mercifully, most of you will never have felt that fear as a child, as an adult, that war was imminent between nuclear armed superpowers. It's very important though to remember and try to empathize with how that felt and what it would mean. I say that because China has just developed a hypersonic weapon which can circle the entire world and hit its target. And it's capable of being nuclear armed. It left the United States, the Pentagon, the Department of Defense, they said, breathless. It defies the laws of physics, they said. In that case, hear me well. Withdraw your warships from the South China Sea. Nobody wants to die for the Spratly Islands. Nobody wants to die because China is determined to reunite one of its own provinces, Taiwan, with the motherland. Because that's what the majority of Taiwanese want. That's what the international law states that Taiwan is a part of China. But Britain and the mighty navy of the Netherlands and several other Mickey Mouse military forces like pedalos are currently peddling like hell alongside the American gunboats in the South China Sea. People say to me, well, we're not going to make a war against China, but what if China makes a war against you? What if China says, we're not going to be pushed around anymore? The days when foreigners could dispatch gunboats into our waters has passed. And we've got the weapons that can sink every one of your ships in an instant. What if China takes the decision out of our hands because these provocations have gone on long enough? We'll be talking to Rachel Blevins in America about Donald Trump. We'll be talking to James Giles about Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak, whose budget will be delivered. Today we'll be talking about politics in the small and in the large and in the round. After all, this is the mother of all talk shows.